Um, we want to send a message, and, and in, the, in the program it said this was about assessment, and part of this session is about assessment, but it's more about a whole big picture, okay? And these were some of the things I took away from, from this morning's keynote. And as we go through this, I want you to think about modeling respect, setting expectations, opportunities for success, and fostering social interaction. I want you to think about that as you move through all the sessions today and tomorrow. Because that relationship, we all agree, is a big part of our curriculum. Um, but I like what Dr. Wright said is that it is content. We have to teach it as content. And that really struck with me because I would just thought that that's what everyone does, some of the things that I'll show you today. But I don't know if that's the case. And again, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I have some ideas of things that I know worked with me and the kids I work with. So it's always important that we have a purpose. And I, I really stress this with my teachers when I work with them, is that the, the students need to know the purpose of the day. So our purpose today is for you to be engaged in a bunch of activities that could be potentially anywhere in middle years. They could be modified to be brought down or even used up into grade 12, okay? I'm gonna show you a number of them. I wouldn't do all these in one session. Another purpose of today will be talking about formatively assessing what we're gonna be doing. So the kids, the students, when we go into that role, know what I am looking for. And that's key, right? Sometimes we forget that, I mean, we can't do what we're expected if we don't know what is expected. And I think that comes back here with setting expectations, not only on how to value and, and, and work with people, but setting expectations as the teacher as to what's going to be happening. So the whole goal of today is we're going to be working with invasion games. And my assessment is going to be around support. Okay, supporting in an invasion game. I don't care what invasion game you play, all right? There's tactics and strategies to that game, that type of game. And one of those tactics is support, okay? So when I say support, what comes to mind when we're talking about invasion games? Please, if someone wants to share. Triangle. Okay, triangle idea. Okay, that's a great concept. So uh, building off the triangle idea, what do we want to look for when we're supporting our teammates in, in all these activities we're going to do? Because I need you to know this. Right? If you're my students, I need you to know this before we start. Today, as we move forward, is there's got to be a purpose. I, I tell the people I work with, you, if, if your kids do not leave the gym after every class and become more confident and more competent, you're not doing your job. If you just think your job is to have them in there playing, that's not enough, right? We know that. It's not enough. There's got to be something you're focusing on. Now, we can do... You're going to need a partner, or you could do it in a group of three. There's dots out on the floor. I don't have a ball in my hand. This is how I touch a dot. I have control of the ball, and I'm on a dot. But I can't move with the ball. And our goal is to see how many dots we can touch before I stop the music. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. So Mark would find someone. I'm going to give everyone 30 seconds to find a small group. It can be two or three. I wouldn't go further than that. There's plenty of equipment. My only job right now is to try to, once I start you, is to touch all the dots. You can't move when you have the object in your hand. We're going to start in 20 seconds. Remember the four things we're looking for. Ready? Go. Okay, here's what I need. I do this with all ages of students. If you do not have the object, if you're in three, this might be difficult. So you, the two that do not have the object, pretend you're one. If you don't have the object, just squat down. If you have the object, hold it up in the air. If you're squatting, you gotta go stand by someone new right now, go. Hurry up, new partners, quick, quick, quick. Hold that up and wave it till you get a new partner. Scream like crazy if you're still looking for one. 
Hello. Who needs somebody still? You should be screaming. These people need help. This time I want you to count how many dots you get to before I stop you. There we go. Whatever. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your pair or three and you have to go with another pair or three. So how I'm going to know that is I'm going to see you all sitting in a group of four, five, or six with one object you're going to use. It could be what you're using, but maybe try something different. So I need to visually see that, and then we'll get going. Let's be fast. Let's go. Here's how we're going to play it to start. We're going to play 2v2, two, two, two versus 2. Okay? Same act idea, is, but you're, now you're trying to score by touching a dot, holding the object with your partner. Same rules apply. I can't move with the ball or whatever object, right? Can't move with it. Now, because we're just starting this, we're going to play a very, very, very lukewarm defense. Meaning, okay, it's Greg, right? Yeah. Man, from university days, I still remember it. <laughs> I will never get closer to this thing, to Greg, than this. Because I want to ensure that we're trying to work on the four things. If I, he has the ball and I'm defending, I want to be able to watch him distribute and move. If I'm in his grill the whole time and he can't distribute, right, what is my intent? What is my purpose today? Is my purpose to see how well he can pivot? Not yet, but I can help him with that. But my, I want to see that he understands the tactics of distributing and moving. I also want to see that he understands if I'm here and his partner's over there, he has to reposition. And I follow him, but I'm not right on him right now. And that's key that we teach that. Because then I can say, I can see a high level, maybe my basketball group is grouped together. And I can say, you can play hot defense, because you're down with this. And I can see others that need to play some pylon cold defense, where it's very off the ball. Okay? So we can't just always do the same thing with everybody. And it takes a lot of work, but it helps us all get to where we're going. So basically what's going to happen, Mark, I'll borrow this. So actually, Mark, you'll be with me for a minute. We'll go just pretend we're with these two. All right? We're going to, however they decide to play defense, our job is to try to hit a dot, any dot. And how we do that is, is if I'm on a dot and I catch it, we score. I leave it, they get it, I start playing defense. Okay? If it's dropped, it's a turnover. If it's knocked down, it's a turnover. I always give the person who knocks it down the ball, because that's good defense. Okay? We could start the game with not allowing any knockdowns, any interceptions. You guys just play it how you want right now. I would typically start it that way. So that's your game. Um, you play till the music stops. It's 2v2. If you have five in your group, you're playing 2v3. And if you have six, you're playing 3v3. Okay? I need you to high five your opponents and say, well done. Awesome. Now here we're at. These are considered dots now as well. Okay. Here's the layer. Here's the scaffolding. Here's how we're growing. You can't score until you've made three successful passes in a row. Okay. Because I'm laying more of these out now, and it can be super easy to score a point. It makes it really tough on the D, right? So now we're out. If they maybe got behind on the first pass, they can maybe catch up and play some better D now. Okay? So you got to have three consecutive passes. But there's one more twist to this. If you're 2v2 right now, you're going 3v1. And if you're... What's my other options? If you're... If you're 2v3 right now, you're going, uh, you're going to go to 4v1. How does the 1 score? 
they just continue to play defense till I stop the music and give them a break. And, in, and when I do this, we can talk about it prior, I stop and I talk about that. How's that, how's that difficult? And, and they get to understand defense more, okay? You don't always play same numbers against same numbers. And remember, what are my four things I'm looking for? If I wasn't busy talking right now, I'm looking, are you giving a proper target signal? Are you in an open lane? Because a lot of the time I'm seeing we're not. So here's what else. If you have the object and your teammate's asking for it and it's a lob over, it's not a clear open path, do not pass it. Because then you're helping them reposition. Ready to go? Whoever the lucky one is, we'll start, we'll give them a chance. Let's go! Okay, hold up. Uh, change who your small team is. I won't say change who your one is because it might be a two. Change who your small team is. So if it's an, a one, just change who that one is. Ready to go? All right, here we go. Open lanes. Signal, give the signal. Okay, hold up. Somehow acknowledge all your teammates for 30 seconds. Yeah, fist pump them, whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, Next one. So here's what we're going to do now. The, do. the dots do not exist for this next activity. Um, these pylons do, however. Uh, I didn't bring all the equipment I could have, but uh, I would do this with students foot dribbling as well, with soccer balls or that sort of thing. Um, we're going to use, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Melissa? Hi, Melissa. Um, could you grab that little red bag of bouncy balls? They're just racket balls. So, can you just throw me one on a one hopper at about this high? <laughs> Woo! All right. So, I don't know if I have enough of these. So, if we're not using these, we're going to use the soft toss frisbee. Here's the activity. Melissa, do you want to help me still? So, you're going to be on this side of the gym. Okay? We're not going to come any closer to this red line to each other. And our job is to one hop pass to our teammate between the two pylons. Now think about this, if I'm doing foot dribbling or skills like that, okay, and the pylons could be different distances. But what needs to happen is once the ball is distributed to me, go ahead, I have to come to this back outside the green and then I have to find Melissa. But she has to re-engage to a new position because we know one of the four things I'm looking for is after you distribute the object is what? Move. So she's going to move and I have to find her. And so another thing that's probably going to have to happen is I have to visually see her, but she might have to verbally help me out because I'm old and slow, right? And when I see her there, I can come forward to that spot, toss her the ball, she has to go back beyond the green and then find me. And she comes running up. Hey, Melissa, right here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it and go. That's the first step. <laughs> you want to talk about setting a target signaling. That's beautiful because there's so many. I'm seeing people doing this. I, I see NFL guys going, hey, I'm open. Boom. Right? That's awesome. Now, I want you to also think, how can I be quicker? What can be done? Because I know once I get this, I have to get beyond here. What can be done to make that happen quicker? I just want think about that. Okay? Yeah. I would probably ask that question and start again. Because I want the kids to talk and think about it. Or give them time. But one option, maybe it's lobbed over, and I come to it, turn, and maybe now I'm allowed to throw it from back here, okay? Which I'm okay with if no one's in the way. Because a through ball is a huge skill set 
in games like soccer, right? We don't always pass right to the person. We pass to where they'll be. So something to think about. So I got half of us in a penny. All right. Of your group of six, you, all the pennies need to pair with someone who is not of the penny. You should have a third of the pennies in here, a third down there, a third here, a third of the shirts, third, third. This works. Okay. Doing my best here to, to get this rolling. So here's the game. The game is, it's like foosball. You're only allowed to be in certain lanes. And I do this a lot or I'll have it in four sections with, with students because that limits how condensed it can be. It's going to get people a lot of touches as well. So pennies, your goal is to, go, is to score on that end, okay? Uh, so if you're a penny here, you're on defense. And if you're in the zone, you're on both. And then you're trying to get the objects to your teammates down here to score. And obviously the shirts are going this way. If I'm on offense as a shirt here, I can't pass, let's say, this white line. I'm going to be using soft toss frisbees. Do you guys mind grabbing a whole whack of those and just bringing them out? And my goal is to hit a pylon. If I hit the pylon, I get to go in there and stack it on another one. Your objective is to stack them all, right? Once I just, I'm on offense, I score, I'm looking for my teammates to distribute me this. Because again, I still cannot move with the frisbee in my hand. On this end, the defense is shirts. They can pick up any frisbee that's on the ground. If pennies do not catch the frisbee here, they can't pick it up and try to score. It has to be a successful pass to then either pass it to a teammate or try to score. Shirts can pick up frisbees that were not successfully passed. You cannot move out of your zone until I tell you you're going to move to a new zone. And it's crowded in here, but that's okay. You'll get the idea of the activity. I could do this with lacrosse sticks. I could do this with soccer balls. I could do this with basketballs. There's endless amounts. Still looking for four things. Am I giving a proper target so I'm signaling I want the object? Am I moving? This is going to be a little different movement. Okay? You cannot move with the object. Remember the defense is allowed to pick them up. Okay? Game is on. Hold up. My mistake. I should clarify. Anyone in neutral zone. It's my mistake. I didn't mention that one. Okay? Anyone can pick up a neutral zone. Go. Okay, hold up. Beautiful, beautiful. So here's what I need to see. Pennies. You're going to shift this way. So if I'm pennies down there, I'm at this end now. And shirts, you're going to shift the opposite way. So if your shirt's down here, you're going to be down at that end. That should work, I hope. Recognize where you are now, knowing you can't leave your zones. Knowing you're still going the same directions. Just one spot. Here we go. Okay. Now I want us to be clear still that I, I put a lot of effort into grouping students at every age level, every grade level. I put a whole lot of effort into it because I think it's very important from a relationships piece and also from uh, just what levels are on so that we're all having opportunities for success. Okay. I was a high school teacher when I started my career and I thought the only thing I did was play the sports of the season and play half court basketball all the time. And I couldn't imagine what it was like for that kid that couldn't dribble, couldn't catch a ball, hardly touched it, couldn't shoot. Because I wasn't that kid, right? By no means was I a basketball star. Uh, I still can't play the game very well, but I was athletic enough and played other sports that it was okay for me. This is not for just 
primary elementary. This is how we can teach at all levels. Think of how many times you touched an object today, right? How many of you were concerned about if you dropped the ball or if they saw that you were throwing properly or if you screwed up for your teammates? I mean, that happens in classrooms, but it doesn't have to. Now, I'm not saying that we would never play half-court basketball, but I can tell you one thing for sure. If we do things like this, the kids that would be standing still in a half-court basketball game are going to be moving more, are going to be asking for the ball more, okay? They're going to get some things. This was one tactic, supporting, right? I could have evaluated lots of other things. I could have tied in some fitness components to any of those games we played. I, I'm just trying to show you that we have to have a purpose. So this is...